Welcome to Raptors today. Paul Jones occupying the captain's chair. Akil, get well. I'm just keeping it warm for you. Alongside Ashley Docking and Savannah Hamilton. And uh, let's talk some Raptors. Mm -hmm. Let's talk new Raptors specifically. And Savannah, I'll start with you. Uh, RJ Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, a couple guys that, that came over from the Knicks. And if you're RJ, I mean, people might have been worried a little bit about him coming home as a young player, but... I feel like once you've been in New York, yeah. <laughs> anything else is easy to handle. He's coming home. He's got a great support system. And I think he's playing really well in his first kind of go-round here with the team. Oh, absolutely. You look at like just like what he's doing right now with the Raptors, how he's fitting in, and there's the the role he's carving himself out right now with this team in comparison to where he was with the Knicks. You know, he left the Knicks. Uh, Knicks fans and media, they were pretty vocal. They're like, eh, this guy was inconsistent. Now you're seeing performances, and he hasn't had perfect nights every night, just to get that clear. But for the most part, we're seeing uh, R.J. Barrett that's aggressive, that's assertive, that's confident, and knows his role. He knows yeah. his role and how to play alongside Scotty. Ash, I felt like in New York it was go stand in the corner until Brunson or Julius I'll pass when yeah. I really have to Randall gave him the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Good way it, putting it. it. It's it's a it's a little different now in Toronto. He's really come in and carved out a space for himself. Yeah. It felt like he saw the opportunity and what could be at stake for him and he seized the moment. Mm -hmm. And to say that you're going to do that is one thing to actually go ahead and average 20 and 7 and 3 since you've been here shooting 55% and change, that in and of itself is really admirable for him to do because yes, you talk about a homecoming and there's comfortability and there's familiarity and being back in Toronto, but that also comes with a lot of pressure mm -hmm. yes, and actually yes. probably a lot more hangers on than he had in New York. People coming out of the woodwork, oh, yo, RJ, remember in the hallway at school? Da -da -da, oh, yeah. RJ, da -da -da -da. tickets and asks and mm -hmm. all those things that come with a certain level of celebrity, especially in your home city. So it feels like he's done a good job of blocking that noise out, doing what needs to be done on the court and then that chemistry with quickly is always nice yeah. when you're in an uncertain situation with a familiar face. with a running mate yeah, yeah exactly yeah. And, and and i guess I, I know i talked to rowan senior uh yeah. and dad Name talked drop. about no you get a ding I, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I get a point for that um but he talked about the same thing the yeah. team is going to have to make sure that he can concentrate on basketball mm -hmm. he comes mm -hmm. with quickly and I feel like I'm seeing both of these guys' personalities come out more in Toronto. Not that they weren't there in New York, but there's a little bit more, Savannah, there's a little bit more freedom for both of them right now. Yeah, there's a comfortability, I think, right now that's coming with this. I think it's probably because like the Raptors, having traded so many players, there's five new guys right now. Yeah you could kind of define what you want this to be. You're not coming into now a preset team. It's almost like we hit restart a little bit on this team, and, and it's true. Like, even Masai, he, he was hesitant to call it a rebuild or a reset, but it definitely feels like there's a new energy and that they can dictate the play style now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's why RJ and IQ has been, have been finding their groove on this team. Um, and, you I don't know, you love to see And you mentioned Rowan. He's been at every single game. You know, his his... his Rowan and his He's always, he'll always be his dad no matter what. Exactly. You know, like, and he also I'm a parent too. I get Rowan it. brought RJ to like Scotch Bank Arena when he was like 13 years old. Yeah. I'm talking to Masai that young even just to get some basketball advice. Um and so there's just a comfortability of being in this building I think for uh, for RJ in particular, but IQ is just fitting like a glove I think as well. Uh, what have you liked or what have you, what is Emmanuel quickly shown you, Ashley, that you said, wow, I didn't know he had that, or what, this is good. I knew he had some of it. This is good. What... What's grabbed you most about him? Playmaking. Yeah. I think playmaking has stood out in a massive way. Um, his effectiveness in the pick and roll, which we've talked about before, is apparent now that he's gotten the opportunity to start. I also really like the fact that his minutes are up significantly, but his effectiveness has not dropped. And in a lot of cases, it's actually on par. And in some cases, it's like a little bit better than when he was with the Knicks. And you don't see that often, right? When you're getting more time, generally mm -hmm. speaking, the effectiveness of your game can drop a little bit. So the playmaking for me, big time but to your point Savannah the vibe was off with the team yeah. 
There were so many question marks. What are we? What are we trying to attain this year? What are our goals? Are we a play-in team? Are we upsetting somebody? Like, what is happening here? Who's getting traded? Contracts are expiring. Who's going to get left in the in the dirt again? And so now I think with Quickly and with RJ, they've been able to set the tone of the party. Like, we've all been at a bad party, right? Yeah. People are, like, kind of sitting in chairs. Not like us now, obviously. The vibe's good here. This but is it's a good just party. Kind of, this is a good party. A good and then party. that one person comes in and you're like, okay, it's yeah. about to go down. Like, yeah. DJ, run the track, whatever the case may be. <laughs> and, like, things just have a better feel around them. Yeah. I think that with RJ and Quickly, now with Scotty kind of not having question marks about if this is his team, is it Pascal's team, what's going on with OG, it's been that fresh start, but also not under the guise of, like, having pressure on them to accomplish something. Well, they're going to grow together. I mean, and that's – you can clearly see that that's the plan as, as they grow together. So let's talk about how they're fitting in with the other guys because that's a big part of it. And I, and I say it's almost – unfair to evaluate them that way because they haven't had a training camp. I mean, Emmanuel quickly talked about being in hotels more than he is in his house, his place <laughs> in Toronto because of the, you know, the tumultuous nature of the season, the trade in the middle. Um, how are they fitting in with, with the rest of the guys in your estimation, Savannah? I mean, I think the rest of the guys, and they said this with their own words too, that the, the guys have been super welcoming and warm, you know, all things considered, they literally got traded, came here, Jeremy first had a game against Cleveland, Jeremy second, they're on a plane yeah. for a 13-day road trip with six games in the West Coast. Um, so that's not easy whatsoever. RJ had a tough one against Sacramento, then bounced back immediately against Golden State. Um, and so I think the team has just been really receptive to these mm -hmm. guys uh, coming in and and. And they, I think the team understands the situation that they got put in as well because um, they're jumping on a moving train. Mm -hmm. And the train hasn't stopped yet because there's another 11-day road trip starting this Saturday. Yeah, I yeah. would just argue, and I know we have some practice sounds to get to, I would just argue, though, that the road trips are actually beneficial at that time mm -hmm. because now you're just with the team. You're just locked just in that basketball. silo. It's just hoops yeah. and your guys and yeah. the women that are involved in the team as well. And we'll just figure it out from there. So yeah. I think it actually could work in their favor. You're not looking for, like, the grocery store. Or, or where do I get my laundry done and my dry cleaning or stuff? You're not like, having dinner at Cineplex Odeon. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's very different when you're away on the road. All right. Ashley referenced it. Let's hear what the guys had to say at practice. How did the uh, unofficial training camp day two go for you today? It really felt like a training camp. Uh, great energy in the gym. Uh, guys, uh, yesterday and today, they, they gave their all best. Uh, we were able to teach a lot, teach some uh, basic, basic stuff that we were teaching uh, in the training camp. Uh, we had two good film sessions yesterday and today. Uh, so good vibes, 100% uh, focus on us and, uh, and our development. What was the focus yesterday and what was the focus today on? Uh, yesterday we did uh, uh, a lot of uh, close out, uh, how we got in the three point line. Uh, offensively we did uh, some uh, scripting, uh, uh, basic stuff that we're running on offense and today we did more of a stations work and uh, parts of the offense, parts of the defense. We worked on our shell defense, worked on uh, boxing out, uh, working uh, on, uh, on uh, protecting the paint, all bunch of stuff. Thanks for watching the Toronto Raptors YouTube channel. Check out our latest videos and subscribe for more. Trent answers back. Gary, Gary sidestep. Great. Got it.